Hey, you ones, welcome back to my channel. Ooh, it's Spooky Terror Thursday. <gasps> Okay, so it is Winnie B L V. Yes, welcome back to my channel. No intro, no outro, just as ho. Oh, but hey, today is Terror Thursday, and it is something that uh, Dawn is doing with Yota, and I have partnered up this week to go over. I believe it's the five, or t they might be doing ten uh, most terrifying books that you ever read, and um, I like horror reading. I kind of like a lot of mystery books too. I just like, I don't know, I like a, a lot of horror. I've read a lot of Stephen King and I've pretty much read all of his son Joe Hill and they'll be on my top five list of terrifying reads. Yeah, terrifying books that you've read. And then because that doesn't seem like it will go very long, I will go over my Halloween because a lot of people uh, shelves the items back here behind me, just what I have going on, especially these little things. I know these are interesting little bags that I bought, and I'll tell you about those, but let's start out. Um, also, just first off, don't forget, if you are coming over from Dawn and Yota, thank you very much. If you haven't gone over to their channel, please do. I will link them down below so you can go check out their terrifying Thursday. Yes. Number five for me, Stephen King, Pet Cemetery. I read that when I was really young. Um, and I did see the movie when I was really young, too. I guess it came out when I was in my 20s, I want to say. Anyway. The book I had read before that and what terrified me about that book so much, if you read it, you know, uh, and they sort of showed it in the movie. I'm talking about the older original movie from Pet Cemetery. Uh, they've since redone it, done a few more, and I've watched those too, but they're all scary to me. But what terrified me about reading the book um, yes, all of it was frightening and crazy, except when they described the, um, sister, when, when the mom goes back, and I believe, I believe it's the mom, it's been so long ago, but when the sister that they keep in the room is described, that freaked me out. Like, that kept me up at night. Like, no lie, that was just sheer scariness to me. The whole thing was scary, and... Watching the movie, though, did not terrify me as bad, but made me sad because uh, I don't want to spoil in anything for anybody, but if you've read it or seen it or both, you know that um, what really uh, happens to their little baby, their uh, little toddler, is just horrific. And that gave me such a terrible feeling after watching it. I vowed after I watched that movie to never watch it again, and then of course they redid them, and I I did rewatch. <laughs> I didn't rewatch the original because that was just so sad. The little baby named Gage, I think was his name. But anyhow, just ugh, <laughs> right? Um, okay, so Pet Cemetery was a horrifying, terrifying read for me. Um, number four, not so much the um, monster vampire scariness that you would think like Halloween brings on. But this was terrifying because it was apocalyptic. It was a book called One Second After. Um, if you ever get a chance to read that, I think it was written back in 2009. Um, I read it shortly after it came out. It was by a guy named William R. I want to say Forshten. Uh, F-O-R-S-C-H-T-E-N. Anyway, um, very scary because it was very close. The book takes place in a town that is, I think it's a fictitious town, but it is set in a town that's very, very close to mine. Um, and it's about a, a, one of those electromagnetic pulses shutting off everything and cutting you off from everything. So think about it. You're driving in your car, your car doesn't work anymore. Um, your electricity, because all of that goes through with modern technology, right? 
everything is shut down and the um, main character in the book, I believe is the sheriff of this little town and uh, people just start walking. And so they have to sort of, you know, watch everything because there's looters, there's raiders. Um, and what was so terrifying and hit home for me about that book was uh, his daughter was a type one diabetic and think about it. Insulin needs to stay cold and oh yeah, you need insulin brought in from the manufacturers on delivery trucks and all of that was shut down. And so it was just all very heart wrenching and, and they get to a point where even your family pets <laughs> are, you know, um, being sacrificed so you have to kind of watch your dogs and cats when it all starts out because people you know who don't have food rationed out and you know it's just a very terrifying apocalyptic movie that I enjoyed reading and they did it I, I think there was a a second book follow-up and I started reading it and just couldn't it didn't have the same whatever the first one did for me. So, uh, number three, Gillian Flynn. I love all of, she doesn't have that many books. I think there's like five, right? I've read all her books, but um, the Sharp Objects, which they did then turn into like an HBO show. <sighs> Everything was crazy about that. Gillian Flynn is like that. At the end, it's kind of like a, M. Night Shyamalan, whatever, Shyamalan, whatever, you know, it sort of gets turned on its ear um, and you go, whoa, you didn't expect that coming. So that it was the same way for me. If you've seen that or if you've read it, I, I strongly urge you to even if you saw it to read the book. The book is great, way better than the series, although the series was good. But in the end, at, on the book, like reading the book at the end, when you figure out you know, it's about people getting killed, especially like kids and stuff. And uh, when you figure out what happens because the murderer is taking all of their teeth out, uh, that was like, whoa, wait, I did not see that coming. So yeah, it has some twists and turns. Um, just crazy. But I, I love that read. Uh, Joe Hill, who is Stephen, that's the pen name of Stephen King's son, who goes by the pen name of Joe Hill. Um, I love the way that he writes. It's kind of like his dad, only a little darker, uh, if that can uh, ever be said. But yeah, to me, there it's a little bit different, a little more youth brought into it. But anyway, I love the book Nosferatu, which they did turn into a series. I watched a couple of episodes and it didn't go along with the book as, as well as I'd wanted. So I was out on that. I think there was two seasons of it. Anyway, that one freaked me out. Just the idea, because I love Christmas so much. And so the um, villain or the killer or the whatever in this movie, the bad person in this movie, uh, the evil, is taking kids to Christmas Town or Chris. Yeah, yeah. Christmas town, and so he uses Christmas to lure in these kids, which he then vampires them and uses, sucks their soul out to become younger. <laughs> so it's a whole thing, but it does freak you out. It does freak you out. And uh, I was just, I read that in just a couple days because I was like so into it. But yeah, he has several books that are really, really good. I, I love Joe Hill. If you haven't ever read Stephen King's son, Joe Hill, I definitely urge you to do that. And number one, the most scary, terrifying book to me on Terror Thursday, the autobiography of Tom Cruise. Oh my God. No, I'm kidding. It would have to be, it's so, it's like a tie for me. It would have to be either Stephen King's It, um, or The Shining, or even The Stand. So, anything that Stephen King does, but those are my top three. And The Green Mile I loved, but for another reason. Um, but yeah, those three, like really, I can't, I can't choose between those three, but, um, horrifying in their own way and you know Stephen King he's gonna bring it so anyway that was fun going over my five top terrifying reads um yeah I don't read as much as I used to I have done a few books on uh audio tape or audio or they don't call it tape but you know um I do that on audible sometimes I'll get a book um and listen to it while I'm just sitting around but yeah 
I don't see as well, so it's kind of harder to read. I'm just lazy, I think. I, I'm just like, oh, what's on TV, <laughs> you know? But anyway, uh, that was fun. So go over and see Yota and Dawn's channel, see what they find terrifying on this Terror Thursday. So people have asked me about my cubby holes. Uh, Y'all know that this is Coach from last year. Uh, these two things, Coach Halloween. This was Coach Outlet. They're all Coach Outlet, by the way. Coach Outlet Halloween. That is, I love the ghost because it kind of looks like it's always looking over at me like, girl, what are you talking about? Um, but these are the cool things. So somebody sent me at one point, was it you, April? Somebody sent me, um, I can't think of who it was now. I'm so sorry. I've forgotten everything. Um, on my IG sent me these little, um, you know, they're Halloween buckets like McDonald's does, only shrunken down. Somebody has one of those um, 3D printers and they made, they're supposed to be toppers for your Stanley Cup. But the thing about it is they don't stay on well and they sort of hit the bottom of your cup so they don't stay on too well. But I thought whenever, because of the flood that we had in our house, we're not going to put up our Halloween tree as early as we had wanted because we need to get everything fixed down there. But anyhow, I thought this would be great on my Halloween tree. So I bought a few packs of them. So people have asked me, I got these on Etsy. I will link them if they're still available. But yeah, I just thought these were the cutest things, the little Halloween. And and thank you to whoever um, turned me on to that. I appreciate it. I love it when you guys tell me about stuff. This, however, was a Jackie. So Jack's Bag Attack. Um, this is Harvey's The Seat Belt Bags. And this one was um, Oogie Boogie. And I love Oogie Boogie. I actually have a popcorn bucket from Disney a long time ago that we got at um, Disney for Halloween, we went to the Halloween party and we got a big, yeah. So I can't fit it in these shelves, but yeah, people ask me about what this is. It's just a little coin pouch or a little, you know, just grab and go, uh, tiny bag thing. And then I have this one, which is around that pumpkin, but they're both Nightmare Before uh, Christmas. Yeah, so Tim Burton and I just... I just adore these. Um, I don't know that they have, they probably have their Halloween stuff now at the Harvey site. So it would, it would be good if you went on there. I should have gone and checked before I started this video. It's called preparation. Get into it, girl. But anyhow, yeah, um, these are that. This is from Target. Just an old fashioned blow mold. I bought it this year. It lights up um, and it does go on a timer. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this I got at TJ Maxx a few years ago. I just thought it was cute. And that's pretty, this is um, Rose Forever. Uh, that down there, I don't know if you could see it as a Rose Forever ceramic bouquet. But then um, this little really cute bag that I just, I don't want to um, not display this that Eva sent me. I just love it. Um, I can't, Anka, I can't remember the designer of this, the lady, that, the artist. Um, and then we never, ever can not put this <laughs> Kira uh, bag from Tory Burch out because people would start to wonder, oh, did you sell it? Did you get rid of it? No. So that's everything um, described. Whatever that's behind me that I can link, I will link. Um, people are asking me about Coach Halloween I went back on my history to see when I bought these things last year, and it was October 2nd. So if you go on the Coach Outlet right now, you can put your um, text or whatever in there and say, you know, you want to be alerted to the Halloween stuff when it comes out because it does go quickly and then you're stuck if you don't buy everything you want. Uh, I suggest buying everything you want because even if you don't like it, you can sell it for a little more uh, later because people really clamored over these buckets last year. And really the only thing you can do is just use them as decoration. They're supposed to be bags, but they're not really. Now this thing is a bag. It's totally cute. But anyway, there we go. That is it. Thank you guys for coming by for Terror Thursday. <laughs> Don't forget Dawn and Yota. I will link them down below. Go over and check out their uh, Terror Thursday videos. And 
Remember, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that button. Let's do it. Let's do it to it. If you watch three, four, five of my videos, we are friends. We're family. Um, yeah, so go ahead and hit it. And also comment down below on your favorite terrifying reads, uh, whatever books that you love and just scared the bejesus out of you, okay? Um, and also remember this one thing. If y'all see my husband girl, don't tell him nothing. Bye. All right, I guess that's it. Terrifying. I think my books were a little more uh, not as scary, but more like just, I love an apocalyptic show or futuristic and like a Mad Max or something, or what was that one with Denzel that he was in? The Book of Eli? Was that it? I just love those because it just is like, you know, we take for granted that we can buzz on down to the Dairy Queen and get a ice cream cone, or we can go wash our car, <laughs> you know, all of these things we do take for granted. And, um, yeah, it's really weird to look at a society after it collapses, like to see what people, you know, write and, and come up with. And it's just amazing. I just think those are, while they're terrifying, they are very entertaining. Anyway, I'm going to put a video right here. Do me a favor, click on that video and keep on watching. Oh my God, I'm scared. Oh no, that's just my hair looks crazy. Okay. All right, biatch.